On this episode... He's really seeking out a drink. My feeling is that his blood sugar levels are probably falling fairly rapidly. Chris's desperate bid to save the life of a frail three-day-old orphan. Time's ticking. We have to find a solution and find it quickly. A challenge for Lisa with a greedy cat called Charlie. Having a piece of ribbon that's 50 centimetres long inside a cat that's only four and a half kilos is going to cause major problems. Wow. Holy hell. You're terrorising people. You need to go away, please, up here. <coughs> Three over-enthusiastic emus are causing headaches for Tim. That way, that way. Ah, ah. <coughs> Zambi. And an extra big hello oh. from birthday girl Zambi. That's a welcome, isn't it? <laughs> You make my world a better place. <laughs> You're right yes. We get you walking again soon. That's good. <laughs> I'm on my way to what I'm sure is going to be a really tough situation. Overnight, a mare has passed away and she's left a foal orphan. Now, foals need a lot of attention and a lot of care, so I'm on my way there now to see if I can help. Chris is on his way to Glenworth Valley, about an hour north of Sydney. You poor little boy. It's OK. At the stables, a heartbroken Mia and her mother, Kerry, are keeping a vigil over the little orphan foal they've named Brulee. This morning I went into the paddock and I discovered that our mare Buffy was lying down. She doesn't usually lie like that. And when I called, she didn't sit up and I knew there was something drastically wrong. Um, I went over and she'd, she'd passed away not long before I got there. Hi, Hi. Chris, how are you going? How are you? Yeah. Average? Oh, yeah, a bit. I'm really sorry to hear what's happened. Yeah. Pretty devastating news, huh? Okay. I'm falling here. Wow, look at you. All right, I'm gonna get in there and just just see how he's going, and then see if we can work out a plan. Plan to be good right now. Yeah, but the moment I meet Kerry, the urgency is written all over her face, and the reason for that is obvious. Brulee hasn't had a proper drink for a number of hours. So how old is he now? Uh, he was born three days ago, yep. um, and. He was a very large foal, as you can see. His mum appeared very healthy, placenta was healthy, everything looked great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was really happy with the way they were progressing and then arrived this morning. And um, most unfortunately, she'd had a big bleed overnight and um, we lost her. You're pretty sure that the reason she passed away was just from a bleed? Sorry, I need to ask these questions to make sure that mm -hmm. whatever's affected her isn't something that could have been passed on to him. Yeah. Any time a mare dies, you're immediately concerned that maybe the same thing may be affecting the foal. If it was a virus or a serious bacterial infection, then the concern right now would be for Brulee's safety. Any small problem can become a massive issue for their health very quickly. Hey, buddy. Yeah, it's okay, darling. Four-year-old Charlie has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash after getting a bit too greedy at a birthday party. Oh, Charlie. You're a silly sausage. Charlie's bad boy behaviour has a history of landing him in serious trouble. This is not the first time that he's done this. Um, we've brought him in before for eating hair ties and he ended up in surgery, unfortunately. It's really upsetting that it keeps happening. What's happened? Uh, Charlie has eaten a ribbon that was wrapped around one of my daughter's birthday presents. Okay, did you see him do it? Did, yes. Okay. We see it really commonly in young cats where they eat foreign objects, pieces of string, ribbon, bits of toys, but you would think by the age of four that a cat has grown out of that. Not Charlie. Well, he knows he's done something wrong. He does. <laughs> Hiding with his head in the corner. While I'm examining Charlie, he's really scared. I think he's feeling a little bit sheepish. He knows he's done something wrong. He knows he's at the vet and he does not want to be here. I need to have a look in his mouth. Charlie. Oh, you're terrified. It's 
time is of the essence, it's highly likely that that ribbon is still in Charlie's stomach. If we wait, that ribbon could move out of his stomach into his intestines, and that's when he would need surgery. What we need to do now is make him vomit. All right, so wish me luck. Hopefully we will be able to make him vomit. If he needs to have an endoscopy, I'll come back out and talk to you, but we'll... We're just trying to prevent him from having surgery. Fingers crossed. Okay. Um, so fingers crossed he doesn't need surgery because that's quite traumatic for him, for us. Don't want to go down that route again. I think that the best thing is obviously just to give him a check out now, see what sort of condition he's in because essentially, you know, the, the clock is ticking for him as, as I'm sure you're aware. Very aware, yeah. yeah. We need to, to find him a, a source of milk but also a source of company and, and, and someone that can really look after him because even though he's a big boy, he's, he's still a fragile boy, isn't he? Very. Chris is on a rescue mission at a farm north of Sydney where a frail little orphan called Brule is in serious trouble. It's almost instinctive that any time you lose a mare, you immediately worry about the foal, because maybe there was a virus or a bacterial infection that could be affecting them both. The concern I have is that perhaps there is some deeper medical problem still lurking within him that could really threaten his health immediately. His mucous membrane colour is nice and pink, so he's obviously not lost any blood himself by the looks of it, which is encouraging. Let's we'll have a little listen to any, any gut sounds here. Yeah, it's all right. It's OK. OK, we are getting some gut sounds there, but they're probably spaced apart a bit longer than I'd like. So, you know, the worry I have is that if his gut isn't turning over and isn't moving as, as quickly as it should, then he is at risk of becoming constipated or developing a, a colic there. Colic is probably the number one fear of any horse owner, and essentially it refers to a whole group of conditions that cause a horse's gut to stop moving. When it stops contracting, it's at risk of developing these toxins, which can then spread around their body and kill them very quickly. The last thing I want to do is just get his temperature. Okay. All right, 37.6. At the moment, his temperature's in a normal range, which is good news. But Chris is now concerned Boulay could be dangerously dehydrated. He's really seeking out a drink. My feeling is that his blood sugar levels, his glucose levels, as a result of, of just that lack of milk, are probably falling fairly rapidly. So really, if we're going to get his gut moving and, and avoid any risk of him going into that hypoglycemic situation just from a lack of energy, we need to find him a permanent solution. We need to find him another mother. Because, sure, milk is, is important, but he needs that company, he needs that, that nurturing that only a mother can give him. Yeah. And that mother has to have four legs, it has to be a horse, because he needs that round-the-clock care. Yeah. So, do you have any other mares on the property that are really good mothers and, and could actually handle a, another foal? Or any that have, have lost their foals? I've only got the old girl out the front there and she'd love to take him on, but uh, unfortunately she hasn't had a fall for a few years, so her milk's tried up. Good boy, good boy. The fact that there's not the perfect mare on a property of 400 horses really shows you just how hard this search is going to be. The added pressure here is that time's ticking. We have to find a solution and find it quickly. This Hi, is Charlie. At Sash, Lisa is about to deal with ribbon-eating cat Charlie. The ribbon has to be retrieved before it can cause a potentially life-threatening obstruction. Sweetheart, we just want you to not have surgery, honey. The first step is I need to get Charlie to vomit up the ribbon. Now, that can be quite unreliable in cats. They don't all respond to the medication. All right, let's give you your injection. Lisa hopes a shot of apomorphine will make Charlie vomit. Hey, buddy. It's a big vomit and it's all over. That's it. It's hard waiting. I'm getting a bit stressed now. It's been a while. Hey, buddy. Come on, little man. After 30 minutes, Charlie's still not showing any signs of bringing up the ribbon. 
He's looking sleepy and I really don't think it's going to happen. I've got to go now and tell Caroline the news that he's got to have an endoscopy. She's not going to be happy. It's been a long wait. I'm sorry. So what's next? So next we're going to give Charlie a general anaesthetic and we're going to put a camera down his throat and we're going to try and pull the ribbon out of his stomach. I'm just hoping that the ribbon is still in there. Okay, there's a small chance that it has moved further along and if that's the case, he may need surgery. Okay. okay. But there's no guarantees, as you know. Okay. All right. This could be surgery for the second time, so I'm really stressed. I don't want him to go into surgery again. If you don't mind, I'd like to see if I can make a few phone calls, see if I can actually find a mare that might have just lost a foal or a mare that, that's amazing enough to, to handle two foals. In Glenworth Valley, north of Sydney, Chris is trying to help three-day-old Brulee. The little foal lost his mum, Buffy, overnight. It's now a race against time to find him a surrogate mum. My biggest fear is that if we don't find Brulee a foster mum, that he can die. Um, and yeah, I, I certainly don't want to lose both of them. This isn't going to be easy. Hello? Hey, Rebecca, it's Chris. How are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. You? Yeah, good. Um, hey, a really strange request, but I'm hoping you can help me out. I'm looking for a, a mare mm -hmm. that you may have that we could loan. Um, that can act as a bit of a, a foster mum to a to a foal that's just lost her mum. We've got mares, but none have recently given birth. Yeah, so nothing that really fits that. No, sorry, I wish I could help. It's a disheartening start, but with time running out for Brulee, Chris tries another local stable. I'm looking for a mare that can possibly act as a foster mum. You know what? I think I've actually got the perfect mare for you. You do have something? Yeah, and you know what? I reckon it actually might help her out too. I'll float it down to you right now. Yeah, look, that'd be incredible. Not a problem, mate. I hope she gets the bill. All right, we'll see you soon. See you later. Cheers. Don't no worry. The mare I found is called Zaji, and she's actually had a pretty tough week herself. She lost her foal just a few days ago. As sad as that is, that actually makes her a perfect candidate to fulfil what we need from a mare. All right, I have some good news for you. We found a mare. She's lost her foal just recently. The foal was a little bit older than Brulee, but she's still got plenty of milk. And she's on her way right now. Yeah, great. Thank you. Right now, it's probably all too easy to get excited and assume this is all problem solved, but it's so far from that, it's not funny. Because once this mare arrives, we have to make sure that she does actually accept this foal. Because if she doesn't, we're back to square one. Good kitty. You're a good boy. At Sash, it's now plan B for Lisa and the team. Ribbon-eating Charlie has to have an endoscopy. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make Charlie vomit up the ribbon, so what we're left with now is we're going to put a camera down his throat into his stomach. Hopefully, the ribbon will be there, and if it is, we'll try and grab it with some forceps and pull it out of his mouth. It's apparently this long and bright pink. But it's that big and that colourful, we should be able to see it if it's there. Medicine vet Dr Chris Greenwell is performing the endoscopy. Having a piece of ribbon that's 50 centimetres long inside a cat that's only four and a half kilos is going to cause major problems as it moves out of his stomach into his intestines. Hope it's in there. Yes, so do I. It'll make it much easier. We can just see it. Come on, kitty. How are you doing? Sorry, I'm Chris. Steve. How are you, Steve? How did she travel? Yeah, really well. Yeah. In Glenworth Valley, an hour from Sydney, Chris is about to get his first look at the mare he hopes will be able to save three-day-old Brulee. Good girl. Easy girl. Here we go. Feel your way. That's the way. Good girl. Zaji has been floated in from a nearby farm. She lost her own foal three days ago and Chris is anxious to see if she can become a surrogate mum to orphan Brulee. Good boy, good boy. 
now that we have a mayor, it's so easy to think that it's all problem solved. But unfortunately, that is far from the truth. Been through a lot, haven't you? Yeah. Every moment of this introduction has to be perfectly stage managed because if one part goes wrong, the whole arrangement flies out the window. It just won't work. Zaji can't be introduced to Brulee just yet. Yeah, it's all right. It's OK. She's agitated from the trip and needs to be walked. And Chris has an urgent job to do, starting with a bucket of the mayor's urine. Brulee's obviously had a pretty tough time, but this is probably the last thing you think he needs, but it could be the best thing for him. This urine will actually be used to disguise the scent of Brulee, so hopefully Zaji accepts Brulee as being her own foal. So we're essentially going to cover him in urine. Unlike us, horses use their sense of smell as their primary sense. So how Brulee smells will form 90% of our mare's judgment over whether this is her foal or an imposter. How's that? How's that? It's been a tough day, hasn't it? Hmm? They won't get much tougher than this. But you still want to do that. Okay. You won't want to do that after this. The next indignity for little Brulee is a liberal coating of Zaji's faeces. So I'm just trying to target the spots that mum is most likely to smell. By doing all this, we're trying to fool her into thinking that this foal is somehow part of her, because it has her smell. And if it smells right, maybe it is right. So I think it's probably time to start to get our mare prepared for the big introduction. There are horses out there that do this for a living. They are professional foster mums. But you've got to remember, Zaji has never done this before. To minimise the risk of Zaji kicking or seriously injuring the foal, Chris is giving her a sedative. A little prick here. The whole idea here is to help her relax and really focus on being open to being a new mum. Yeah, good girl. Maybe she does it. Now that she is looking relaxed, we can lead her up to the yard and that's where our introduction is going to take place. Yeah, good girl. Up until this point, we focused a lot on Zaji's sense of smell, but she is still going to use her eyes to look at the foal and realise, hey, that's not mine. So, we need a blindfold. Ready to roll? Yeah, we are. All right, let's go. All our plans are now in place, but really, the most crucial part is the next few minutes, because that decides whether Brulee has a new mum or stays an orphan. Come on, kitty. At Sash, the minutes are ticking by, and there's still no sign of the ribbon in Charlie's stomach. The worry is that that ribbon will move out of his stomach and into his intestines. We can only get it out with an endoscopy if it's in his stomach. If it's moved past that, well, the only option is surgery. Come on, Charlie. It's all still there. Yeah, there it is. Seeing something. There it is. All right. Yeah, that's our ribbon. Removing foreign bodies with endoscopes can go two ways. They can be really difficult or really easy. OK, the back of it. When it comes up, there's a chance that it could cause an obstruction. Hopefully, it won't end up going that way. Cool. All right, so here we go. We've grabbed it with the, the forceps, and now we're just pulling it back up at the stomach now. All right, it's now into the esophagus, and so if we just keep coming up, it should come out the mouth shortly. There it is. It's like a party trick. <laughs> As we're pulling out this length of ribbon, it just keeps going and going and going. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. Holy hell. I cannot believe how long this piece of ribbon is, and I cannot believe that Charlie managed to swallow it. Far out. Oh, what? It is longer than the cat. Caroline is going to be one very relieved and happy owner. You're awake. Did you see what you ate? Look at this. Do you remember this? Charlie will spend the next few hours recovering from the procedure and then hopefully he'll be able to go home. OK, Charlie. You're all right. Now you just have a good sleep, sweetie pie.
At the Glenworth Valley Horse Farm, it's the critical moment for orphan brulee. Will surrogate mum Zaji accept the little foal? Go right in, she's calling go for it, yeah. The real danger here is that if Zaji truly rejects brulee, she'll let him know about it and she'll do that by kicking him. And a kick to him in the wrong place, it could be fatal. Owner Kerry knows that Brule's future depends on the foal being able to suckle. OK. You just find it there, Lauren. You find it. I'm feeling very nervous because this could mean the difference between life and death for Brule. Yeah. It's all right. He's here. Your baby's here. OK. Honey. It's OK. The baby's here. This is clearly the critical time. They're giving each other little sounds. They're clearly aware of each other's presence and there's no sign of aggression yet. It's OK. Just let him um, feel around there. It's on sir. She's drinking off the mare. Brilliant. Brulé dives straight for the udder. That sound of him suckling is right now the sweetest sound of all. Isn't she a beautiful mare to do that? Like Brulé, Kerry's had to be incredibly brave just to get through today to what we hope would be a positive outcome. Now we've seemingly got that, the emotions all become too much. Oh, God, I hope he lives. You right? Yeah. All right. Big day, huh? I was trying to have a little cry by myself, but that's all right. <laughs> an, an amazing moment. You, you could um, search high and low and not find a compatible mare, and uh, we've been fortunate enough, lucky, enough and thankful enough to find a mare that um, loved him and he loved her back straight away. You're a clever boy. She's a lovely girl. He's got a really strong will to live, doesn't he? He's just... He really has. Mm. has. Hopefully, you know, that the, those hormones of hers will kick in. Mm those instincts and those maternal urges of hers will, will still be going once the sedation wears off. And so this will become a lot more comfortable for her and then she'll, yeah, she'll be enjoying this. What this little moment has really shown us is that their bond is incredibly strong and it's getting stronger by the minute. So what this whole situation needs is less human time, more horse time. They're looking pretty good. Awesome. Incredibly relieved. Uh, it, it could have gone, um, either way and um, it's great for her and um, it's even better for Brulee. Thank you so much, honestly, it's great. This day had such a sad start, yet through a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck, we brought two horses together that need each other and made us have many happy days ahead. At the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner can sense trouble in the busy picnic ground. Here's our lunch. Oh, I ate your Quick eat it, Eli, otherwise he might come and get yours too. We get loads of positive feedback about the park, that people have had a great day, uh, liked engaging and being interactive, hands-on with animals. <laughs> the problem is that lately, some of the emus have started getting a bit too inquisitive. Go away. Go. <laughs> Particularly when there's food around. That was my lunch. <laughs> They're stealing hot chips, taking sandwiches, scaring, terrorising kids, pecking ears, trying to steal jewellery. Go away. <laughs> I know who the troublemakers are. What are you doing, mate? What's your lunch there? Hey, hey, stop that, mate. Sorry. No, 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 no. Hey. Yeah, he's OK. He's OK. He wants food. The troublemakers are emus, three of them. They're at an age where they're bold and they've been brought up around people, so they're just barging in and taking someone's lunch. Sorry, guys. Hey, out of here. 
Sorry. The worrying thing is that when they get so close, they are scary little kids. That can lead to someone reacting and then the emu reacting and it could go one step further and the emu knocks a small child over. That's pretty serious and we don't want that to happen. <laughs> I've got to move them out now. They can't stay in here. It's busy and they're scaring people. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to see all types and sizes of patients, but every now and then you see one that really has an effect on you. Now, I'm off to see that particular girl right now who today is experiencing a very special milestone, but it's a milestone with meeting. On his way back to Bondi, Chris is calling in at the Zambi Wildlife Retreat. Hello. G'day, Chris. How are you? Good, how are you? I couldn't miss the special occasion, you know. <laughs> Can you believe she's one year old? Well, you know, I'm keen to see as has she grown up. <laughs> she's has she grown. matured? There's a difference from last time. Come here. Come on. Chris is catching up with the star attraction, Zambi, an adorable lion cub he first met when she was barely a month old. <coughs> Keepers Donna and Amanda were concerned because Zambi's mum wasn't looking after her. At that time, we were desperate. Not only did Zambi need regular feeding, she also needed a new social hierarchy to fit into, one that would set her up for the rest of her life and essentially make her manageable and sociable. We had a radical plan. It was to actually introduce Zambi to a Labrador, Sabi, and make Sabi her adopted mother. You'll see a big difference, yeah. Difference in how, how she hugs or...? Well, she's bigger than last time. It's been eight months since I last saw Zambi, and the one thing everyone knows about lions is they get big. I've got no doubts, she's grown up. Oh, there she is. This reunion could go anyway. Hey. Yay. Hello. Oh, he's at it again. What are you doing, mate? You're terrorising people. You need to go away, please, up here. At the Australian Reptile Park, three young emus are rampaging through the picnic area. Hi, cats. They're pecking at shiny jewellery, a ring or an earring, and lucky not to take the ear off with it. We really can't have them doing that. I just watched them take sandwich, chips, and they're just darting everywhere, scaring the little kids. Tim has to make an urgent phone call to his mate Jason at the Hunter Valley Zoo. Hey, you know these emus that I've told you about? Yes, mate, yep. The, the rat pack. I can't stop them, mate. They're out of control. I've, I've got to bring them up. OK. Causing you some grief there, mate. Oh, well, they're not causing me too much grief, but our poor visitors, they're a menace. OK. Cool. OK, mate, I'll see you soon. All right, mate. Good luck. The three rascals suddenly sense that something's up. Hey, this way, this way, this way. Come on, mate, I don't want you to go away, but you're being naughty. I really don't want to catch the emus with a park full of people, but they're not playing ball. If we try and grab one and it darts off, it could knock over someone. I don't want that to happen. Hey, out of there. What are you doing, mate? Hey. Yay. Hello. Yay. <laughs> well, that's, that's a welcome, isn't it? <laughs> At really? the Zambi Wildlife Retreat, hug, Chris lick. is getting a lion-size welcome. In your own unique way. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's really nice to see you. <laughs> you have got it. That was fantastic how she jumped up on Chris. <laughs> she does that with people she knows quite well, so he should feel flattered that she did that to him. Yeah. Chris is here to check up on birthday girl Zambi, but Zambi is the one checking up on him. I think she remembers the fact that my, my shoes have a collection of animal smells on them too, <laughs> like no other. <laughs> There's like a year's worth of work in those. Zambi right now is getting the smorgasbord selection of my last year of veterinary work. She likes it. A man with a hundred smells. Don't okay. leave it. Hey, leave, leave, leave it. Good girl. Oh, look at hole. that. <laughs> Got a little hole. So Zambi, you, <laughs> you can't have the shoes. Okay. But I do have something else for you. Don't get cranky. <laughs> hey, 
Go away. Come on, guys. They're flighty. They know something's not right. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a bird. This way. Come on. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim and his team are trying to round up three wayward emus. <laughs> Tim can't allow the big, overpowering birds to keep harassing visitors. This looks hard because it is hard. Full park of people. We don't want to run the emus, but I'm not having any luck coaxing them up to where I need them to go. Yep, that way, that way. Ah, ah. Not like normal, no chasing and grab. Yeah, yeah. Just opportunistically next to him, yep. bang. No kids around. Uh, if I grab him, please clear my path. Yep. If you grab him, I'll clear yours. Straight up to the holding yard. Yep. Hey, out of there. Out of there. <laughs> now, emus, they're big, they're incredibly strong, and it's a very specific grab, so you've got to commit to it 100%. Once you get them, you lift them up, because if their feet can touch the ground, they're way too strong. They'll just push off and they'll break loose. Okay. Yep. Nick, can you give me a hand, mate? From behind there? No legs? Yep, just put some weight on, please. You'd think catching an emu would be easy. They look like an oversized chook, but it's actually quite dangerous. If you get in road of those big feet, they can break your leg, they can break your arm. So it's high stakes, because there's so many things that could actually happen. He's gonna kick. I mean, you're only half size, but look at that paw, huh? You've almost already got my match. You don't like that? <laughs> no? Fair enough. At the Zambi Wildlife Retreat, Chris has a birthday gift to win over one-year-old Zambi. Look, check it out. Good things come in small packages. <laughs> it's a vaccination Zambi. Is there anything more exciting than this? The box that it came in. At this age, Zambi needs her vaccination. Now, it's not a special line shot that she gets. It's an F3 vaccination. It's exactly the same as your everyday house cat gets. OK, Zambi. It's time for your present. This present's so special, Zambi, you get a whole year's worth of enjoyment out of it. I think not many presents can do that. Zambi's already put her tooth through the base of my shoe, which is made of rubber and leather. I'm about to give her an injection. If she doesn't like it, she could give my arm the same treatment. <laughs> Just shook it off. And back to the box. <laughs> a vaccination is never the nicest gift on your birthday. I'm sure Zambi would have preferred Chris's boots. And lucky Zambi is about to get another birthday surprise. What's going on, Zambi? You, you see something? <laughs> what is it? Settle, mate. Okay, out we go. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim has his hands full. You right, Tim? I've caught the first emu. The problem is, I've got 100 metres to walk and he kicks and he kicks. Let's make sure those legs can't hit anything. He's That's trying it. to relocate Good, three troublesome yep. emus. One sec, I still need a hand. I've slipped. But they're not yep. going Good. anywhere sure. without a fight. So the emu itself isn't so heavy, maybe 25 kilos. But when you've got him up, the feet are either going to spray to the left or spray to the right. Whichever side his feet are, your head goes to the opposite and you tuck it in. That's how you stay safe. One, two. Door, boys. <sighs> Emu number two realises too late that he's the next target. Come in, boys. Come on, mate. He's almost there. It's swords going on and it's like, I don't want to be picked up, so it's just easy mate, its way to the gate. That's it. Hey, well done, gates. We just simply close the gates behind it, corral it up to the holding area, in the back of the truck. Two down, one to go. But emu number three is ready for action. That's it, mate. Just put your arms out a little. Yep, in you come. The first two emus were easy, but this last one has seen his mates go and he's a bit flighty, which makes him harder to catch. But this is all about finding them a beautiful home in a big paddock where they can roam free and not terrorise people. OK, you come over this side, mate. Block him. Oh, got him. Where are the legs? Yep, that's OK. OK. Let's 
go, gate please. So Kyle will come in behind me and just cuddle me mate, put your arms around the emu and pull him in tight. Legs on your wrist. People make the mistake of thinking grab the legs and I'll stop them from moving. Worst thing you can possibly do because it gives the emu leverage and then he's going to be pushing back against me, I'll drop him. Set, set. Good, 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 go for it, go, 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 go. Okay. Well done, mate. The Rat Pack's in the trailer. Job well done. It's yeah. on your leg, mate. I don't know who's better off, me or him. Not nice and it was all warm. I want to get going straight away. It's time for them to go to their new home. <laughs> Not me. At the Zambi Wildlife Retreat, Chris has arranged an unusual family reunion. Yikes. Go on, Zabi. Zabi. Hey, Jax. Hey, Zabi. Look, Look who it is. Zabi is being reunited with Labrador oh. Sabi and Jax. Family, huh? You can't choose them. Who are her surrogate family for the first important months of her life. All of a sudden, I think the dogs, yep, Jax, Sabs, you've realised that no longer in charge, are you? That growl that used to work no longer does. <laughs> if you simply raise a line around people, they never learn discipline. They never learn what it's like to be part of a pack, be part of a team. By mixing her with a Labrador and all the Labrador's friends, all of a sudden, Zambi had a family and, importantly, had to learn discipline. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, yeah, Sabi. <laughs> yep. You spoke up for yourself. Well done. Your little girl's not so little anymore, is she? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because even though Zambi is all over Sabi and really looks to be the boss, one growl from Sabi is enough for Zambi to realise, oh yeah, mum just told me off. I'm not the mediator in this family dispute. <laughs> so why am I in the middle of this? I'm really happy with how today went. <laughs> she just really enjoyed herself and I'm sure Chris enjoyed himself too. <laughs> I'm like the distant relative that just visits occasionally. <laughs> Next birthday, what do you say? Yeah? Yep, two years. <laughs> the present might just be better. It'll be the shoes. <laughs> What's left of them anyway? All right, I'll see you guys later. You're gonna come with me. I don't blame you. Trust me, I really don't. <laughs> Charlie. Hey, buddy. How are you going? At Sash, party boy Charlie has woken up after the endoscopy to retrieve one very long pink birthday ribbon from his stomach. Your mum's going to be coming in to get you and you can get out of this place. Even though Charlie's looking a little bit sheepish and feeling a bit sorry for himself, he needs to know that he's a very lucky boy. We couldn't make him vomit, but we got the ribbon out with the endoscope. Hello. We avoided him having surgery, and he should thank his lucky stars that he's going home. Someone is very excited to see you. Is he? <laughs> Owner Caroline is relieved that naughty Charlie's hey, ordeal is finally over. Hello. Oh, Look Charlie. who's here. Charlie, this is it. This is the last time you eat something that you shouldn't. It's even hiding from you. I think he's hiding his head in shame. Charlie's really lucky. He has had surgery once before. So he's lucky that he didn't have to go down that route again. So here's a little reminder of what was in his stomach. Oh my goodness. Now that is bigger than him. That's scary, isn't it? It's quite unbelievable. So yeah. he is incredibly lucky. Hopefully this is the end of Charlie's adventures eating things. We really don't want to be coming back here again. Shall we get you home to your brother? Caroline is such a dedicated owner and Charlie is so lucky that she brought him in when she did. He is one very lucky cat and he's going home one very happy boy. Oh Charlie, you're a silly sausage. This is beautiful, mate. I think they're going to like it. Yeah, they're going to love it. Their friends are curious about what's in the trailer, I reckon. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is hoping owner Jason at the other residence can sort out his three troublemakers. 
The emus are not going to get any packed lunches or flush jewellery to pick out at the Hunter Valley Zoo, but they're on a nice lush acreage. They can stretch their legs and walk around on the grass. And even better, they've got a few older adult emus to educate them on how to behave instead of being the delinquents that they have been at the reptile park. So this is it? Yeah, mate. OK, what I'm going to do is just open this door yep. and we'll hang over there. Yep. And hopefully, they just walk out. Sounds good, mate. OK. Join the others. For a minute there, they just sat there in the trailer. And I'm thinking, please don't make me go in there. Oh, no, here we go. He's going to lead the way. Well Good done, on you, mate. little mate. Well done. And then the first one walks out. Two, oh. three. And the other two follow. I'm relieved and happy that this is their new home. See you later, mate. Hope you're happy here in your new home. Thank you for giving Jace any trouble. I'll see you when I come back. My beautiful boy. Huh? It's been four weeks since Chris's emotional rescue mission to save the life of a struggling little orphan foal named Brulee. Hi. Hello. Well, this is a good sight. Isn't it ever? Just absolutely inseparable. Just a few weeks ago, due to a really desperate situation, we took a big chance on a mare that I really didn't know in the hope that she would take to a little foal called Brulee. They may not be blood relations, but you wouldn't know it. She's a great teacher as well. Mm, it's, it's more than just physical. It's, it's got to be emotional as well, and then that connection. Absolutely, it does. really giving him so much, so much security. And, and for her, she's, you know, she lost her foal. Yeah. So she feels complete again. Yeah, I think that's why it has worked so well. It has been a miracle for us. It's been very surprising and we're ever so thankful for the gift of Saji. It's, it's been amazing. What I've learned is that you're doing a great job and these guys have got it all sorted. Oh, thank you. Mm. With your help, thank you. No, I played a part, but... You played a big part. There aren't many more beautiful things than, than looking at that. No, there really aren't. This relationship just shows you that you can never give up when it comes to animals because out of the greatest darkness here in the depths of despair has come this incredible bond that right now seems unbreakable. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.